Welcome back to Anton's class. Cheers. I'm drinking a wonderful blend of um, herbal teas. Rooibos, of course, in honor of South Africa. And I uh, have organic white tea and some Ojibwa wellness tea. It's a Native American herbal tea blend that is health promoting. And because I felt like something was coming on and I wanted to beat out any potential would-be virus, okay? And it is cold and flu season up here in the United States. It's cold, all right? So um, I got this from South Africa at the Rosebank Sunday Market uh, from a beautiful woman from Mali, and this is from Mali, and I have ancestry from Mali, so I decided to go ahead and adorn this. It's really cool, like amulet looking thing, but anyways, this video is about South Africa, and I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why I personally would relocate to South Africa and it's morning time so I'm going to be trying to talk sort of quietly and so I hope you guys can hear me okay um, so yeah I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I personally am seriously considering relocating to South Africa and hopefully this video is beneficial to you if you're considering visiting South Africa or even potentially relocating there like myself all right, I know I have a lot of ret retirees who are my Anton's classmates, as well as other people from around the world, and a lot of African Americans like myself who are interested in visiting the motherland, living in the motherland. And so I wanted to offer you my personal perspective, okay? These 10 reasons may or may not be on your list, but um, if you're from South Africa as well, go ahead and comment below. I love to have my South African folks here representing in the comments. You are more than welcome here. All right. But this video specifically is really to help those who are not from South Africa and but are interested in relocating there. All right. And since I'm African-American, my perspective is probably a little bit more beneficial to other African-Americans because we have a similar background and sometimes we have similar requirements and things that we're looking for all right so let's go ahead and get started if you're new here my name's anton go ahead and hit that subscribe button i would love to see you back here this channel is all about uplifting wellness and part of my wellness journey has included traveling abroad living abroad and learning how to eat plant-based in a more health promoting way and so anyways you guys please hit that subscribe button and engage in the comments in a very kind way. All right. You can disagree with me. You can disagree with other people, but please be respectful in the comments. So let's go ahead and get into this video. Let me take another sip of my delicious tea. Very high in antioxidants, anti-inflammatory. Oh, I also put like this ginger turmeric Tulsi tea. So South Africa, let's go ahead and get into it. Number one, and these this list is not in any particular order. Number one is the sheer beauty of South Africa. It is an incredibly beautiful country, all right? And I'm talking right now about the natural beauty, the landscapes. It is so diverse. You have deserts, stunning deserts. You have gorgeous, beautiful beaches. You have forests. You have highlands. You have lowlands. You have rolling plains. You have hill country. You have subtropical regions. You have that beautiful rich red earth that looks more similar to like maybe Zimbabwe up in Northern South Africa, all right? South Africa is so diverse and beautiful in the natural terrain. And for me, someone who loves nature, that is very important. I love to be in a country where there are beaches, there's access to ocean. Um, you know, I love mountains as well. So South Africa has both, okay? And I've fallen in love with the desert living here in Arizona. So I could always go and enjoy the desert up in, I believe it's Northern Cape. I'll show it on the map. And um, so yeah, South Africa is not gonna let you down if you're someone who is looking for, to enrich your life with natural beauty. And you know, speaking of wellness, being exposed to and enriched by natural beauty is very important to our health and wellness, all right? So keep that in mind, all right? Reason number two, all right, or I should say the second reason on my list is the diversity of the people, all right? So we talked about the diversity of the landscapes. South Africa is also incredibly diverse as far as people are concerned. OK, of course, you have the indigenous black population, which in itself is very diverse, which we'll get into. 
but then you have diversity because there are people whose ancestors are originally from India who are South African. They've been there for generations. You have, of course, of course, the white South Africans who have been there for generations now and are, you know, part of the local population and are African, basically, right? They've been there for generations. Okay, you have the mixed people who are generally called colored. There may be some other terminology out there that I'm not aware of. Please go ahead and fill me in. You have the Cape Malays who are whose ancestors are from like Islamic countries. I think pri primarily uh, Malaysia. And um, yeah, there's just a large mix of people. And so I kind of blended in. You know, everyone assumed I was a local South African. I know obviously I passed as black because I am. <laughs> um, but I, I saw a couple of people who looked like they were Indian mixed with black. And I kind of they kind of resembled me. Uh, some people think that I'm Indian as well, and some people think that I am like Ethiopian, which is African. So basically, I fit in in South Africa. I had a similar experience in Namibia. I fit in effortlessly. People assumed I was Namibian, and in Ethiopia, everyone assumed I was Ethiopian. South Africa, same thing. So for me personally, that's something that I enjoy. The diversity, though, is so beautiful, which is what this point was really about, and um I grew up in a part of Southern California that was pretty diverse. Well, it was majority white, but in LA itself, it's a pretty diverse area. And so I like to be able to have a wide variety of people walking around and I get to experience their cultures. I love studying and learning about different cultures, which is why I love to travel and learn different languages. And so the diversity of South Africa is peak. And um, now, the diversity of the black people itself especially is so rich and enriching for me. As a black American going to South Africa, I see myself more identifying, of course, with the black South Africans. And um, the diversity of within the black experience in South Africa is so rich, it's divine, it is spectacular, and it I love it. You have, of course, the different ethnic groups. You have Zulu, you have Kosa, you have Pedi, Tswana, Tsonga, uh, Sutu and all these others. I apologize, apologize if I left any out. And they all have their own unique culture. Their cultures are similar, especially the Guni people and their languages are intelligible. Um, but yeah, that diversity is very enriching and I love that. All right. I absolutely love it. And beyond that, even beyond the ethnic groups within the the black communities there, there's just a richness of the black experience. Okay. Black people are a minority where I grew up in California and here in Arizona. And so getting to go to an African country and see the richness and this full spectrum of blackness. Okay, black people are not a monolith. We are not monotone. And so getting to see all of this variety of the black experience in South Africa was so beautiful and enriching to me. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you're into. You could be into anime, you could be goth, you can be into science, you can be into music, you could be into whatever the case may be. You will be able to find that experience, that niche, that community of black people in South Africa. And I loved that. All right. So moving on to my next reason, which is proximity to other African countries that I'm interested in. As you guys know, if you're if you've been with Anton's class for a while, I was in Namibia. South Africa borders Namibia, which is awesome because I want to go back. South Africa borders Botswana, another country that I would love to visit and go to. I've heard so many good things about Botswana. It is an up and coming African country. Um, Zimbabwe is another beautiful country that I think is kind of underrated. Thanks to Wodemaya, of course, a lot of people are getting interested in Zimbabwe. I've been interested in Zimbabwe for quite a while. It has a lot of beautiful very terrain sort of like south africa it doesn't have the ocean but it's incredibly beautiful i've always wanted to go to zimbabwe and malawi is another country excuse me i've kind of got allergies zimbabwe is another i'm sorry malawi is another fantastic country it has that beautiful huge lake i'm not sure what it's called i'll of course have it pop up and it almost suffices like an ocean the way the waters look the tr the like turquoise waters make me want to visit Malawi. So South Africa is awesome because it's close proximity to all of these fantastic countries in Africa. All right, reason number five, beautiful people and culture. Okay, and I have several bullet points here. So the people of South Africa are very beautiful and, and I mean that in every way, physically, 
culturally, linguistically, okay? I love hearing the indigenous South African languages. I love hearing the Zulu. I love hearing the Tswana. The, um, I was in the Johannesburg area, so I'm specifically talking about my experience, of course, in that area. And I believe Sutu, these languages are so beautiful and you will fall in love with them. Well, I did at least. If you're interested in the sounds of different languages, they are absolutely beautiful. The indigenous South African languages are beautiful to behold, all right? They are spectacular. I love attempting to pronounce the words and the clicks and learning how to pronounce them correctly. Um, I try my best, of course, but <laughs> I probably still get them wrong. So the languages, the people, the beauty, the culture, all right, getting to see the traditional dances and their attire, their traditional attire is stunning. You know, they would blend traditional African attire with modern streetwear. And I thought that was amazing. They would have like traditional or like um, their natural hair, but they would dye it these like really futuristic colors, almost like Afrofuturism. And I loved it. It was spectacular. And so if you're going to South Africa, that's something that you will appreciate. You will not be let down. It is an absolutely beautiful country full of beautiful people. All right. Next one. Oh, I forgot to mention under the beauty of the culture is the music. I love South African music. I've been listening to it since before I had even ventured down into South Africa. I'm a piano. Um, home. Um, hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Probably not. And um, if you don't listen to South African music, then what's wrong with you? I'm gonna have some of my favorite songs or artists populate on both sides. Um, yeah, I was listening to South African music long before I had ever ventured down there. They have a wide variety of music. I love Ama Piano because it kind of combines jazz and like neo soul R&B and with traditional African musicality and beats and rhythms. It's beautiful hip hop mixed with house mix it's just it's it's awesome it's awesome so you're missing out i actually was listening to it one day at my old job and this lady was like what are you listening to anton that sounds so beautiful and i was like it's south african music she was like can you show me some artist you know she was a, a white american woman i was like absolutely so then she plugged it in and she pulled it up on her phone and now she's probably listening to south african music to this day all right so it's really good you guys should check it out and um Next is reason number six, comforts, creature comforts. All right, let me take one more sip. The creature comforts of South Africa are numerous. As an American, of course, coming from the West, for me, it's nice to be able to enjoy certain creature comforts, right? What do I mean by that? the infrastructure the, the way the stores are set up the the products that they sell at the stores you know as i mentioned before i eat a plant-based diet and if you eat a particular diet like plant-based or let's say you're paleo or low carb they have those food items like at the skim and food lovers market potentially other stores i believe whole foods which everyone on my last video was like that's an expensive store anton don't mention it but woolworths certain health products that have some vegan ice cream uh, I think that was the only place I found vegan ice cream or plant-based ice cream, which I love as a treat. Um, but in South Africa, they have those creature comforts that I'm used to, okay, that you're probably used to as well. Um, some people want to go to Africa and not have an experience similar at all to their home country, and that's okay, and that's understandable. Respect, props to you guys. But me personally, if I'm going to be living somewhere because I eat a plant-based diet and that is very essential to my well-being because I had I had high blood pressure, I had high cholesterol, and I was able to lower those both naturally, okay? Not using drugs. The doctor wanted to put me on medication. I said, nope, I'll do it naturally, and I did so. Praise be to God. And um, I did through eating a plant-based diet. If you're interested in health and wellness coaching, you could always email me, antonsclass1 at gmail.com, and potentially we could set something up. But anyways, you guys... Um, South Africa has the creature comforts that I'm used to. They have access to like the teas that I like, the rooibos, of course. It's from South Africa, hibiscus tea, and these different products that help with blood pressure maintenance. And um, yeah, so, and if you're watching this, you'll be able to feel comfortable in South Africa, in my opinion, okay? Creature comforts are awesome. Um, next one, 
I blend in. This is region, reason number seven. I already kind of mentioned this under the diversity of the people I fit in. Like I said, people assumed I was local. Speak, people spoke to me in Isizulu. They would say, Saubona, Unjani. And I would say, Gia Pila, Wuda Unjani. You know. <clears throat> and so it was cool. They would try to strike up conversation sometimes in their local languages. And I don't speak it fully. That's basically the extent of what I know. But if I do move to South Africa, I will certainly learn some Zulu. And if I stay in the Johannesburg area, I will learn some Sutu and maybe some Tswana. Um, and by the way, the languages, like the Guni languages, like I said, are intelligible and they're in the same like language family. And then you have the Sutu, Tswana, Peri, I believe, se Sutu, se Tswana, se Peri are in their a language family. They're all Bantu languages. Um, but they have the Bantu language family is like a macro family, and then you have micro families within the Bantu giant language family. Okay. Anyways, you guys, even Kiswahili is a Bantu language. So if you speak Kiswahili or Kinyarwanda or even like a Namibian Bantu language like Herero or Vambo, then you would be able to learn um, any of the other Bantu languages, probably easier than, say, someone who doesn't speak any Bantu language at all. So anyways, you guys, I was saying that I fit in, and I do. People spoke to me in a local language. Number eight, higher education. So South Africa has some of the top-ranking universities in Africa. Um, Cape Town University, Stellenbosch, which is right outside of Cape Town. They're beautiful campuses, by the way. Um, University of Pretoria and I believe University of KwaZulu-Natal are some the four top-ranking universities in South Africa. And I believe they are some of the top-ranking universities in the entire continent of Africa. So if you are looking to get a higher, um, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or what have you, then that's something to consider if you're looking to relocate and you yourself want to get a degree, I want to get my master's potentially. And so that's something to, that, to keep in mind. And maybe if you have kids that are about to be starting college and that's something you're looking into, then South Africa has some of the top ranking universities in Africa. Okay, so do keep that in mind. And yeah, the campuses are absolutely beautiful. All right. I believe, I'm not sure, Blood and Water is filmed around University of Cape Town. That's a show on Netflix. Check it out. Also watch Savage Beauty. That lets you kind of have a bird's eye view into the Johannesburg area. So, um, and uh, Queen Sono. Those are three of my top favorite Netflix South African shows. African shows, period. Uh, infrastructure, number nine. I mentioned it briefly under comforts. Creature comforts, the the uh, infrastructure is fantastic in South Africa. I was in Namibia living there last year and the infrastructure there is uh, superior and so is South Africa. It's even better, I think. Um, their infrastructure, the roads you can get from any town or city easily with no problem for the most part. Um, of course, the airports, you can hop on an airplane in Durban and be in Cape Town within a few hours, Joburg, Bloemfontein, wherever else. Um, so yeah, the infrastructure in South Africa is very nice. It's very similar to the United States. Again, for some people that's not important, but for me personally, that was something that I enjoyed while being in down in South Africa for a month. And so if that's something you're interested in and you're potentially considering relocating or retiring there, they do have the infrastructure, okay? Maybe I'll make a separate video about hospitals because I know a lot of people ask about that, the healthcare system. Um, I did have an, uh, I did go to the hospital. I went to the doctor in South Africa, which was an overall positive experience. It could have been better, of course, but that's okay. Um, it was in Kimpton Park area, so. Anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and move on to my next reason. Reason number 10. Last but not least, reason number 10, and I'm going to try to be as nuanced as possible with this one. You can buy land in South Africa as an American, and um, that's a good and a bad thing. It's good for us, but it's also potentially bad, and I'm going to get to why. Some capitalists, some people who seek to just profit for their own personal gain, want to sink their claws into Africa and carve out a section for themselves and not integrate at all. That is not what I promote. That is not what I support. If I go to South Africa and buy land, I want to integrate with the local population as much as possible. I want to learn from them. You know, I want to offer what I have, but I also want to learn from them. If I'm growing, let's say, crops on my land, I want to be able to let that, the fruitful 
the fruitfulness of my land also benefit the local population. Let's say I'm living in a predominantly Zulu area. Of course, I want to speak with the, the elders of the community and have their permission and ask, you know, integrate with them, communicate with them. That's key. I don't recommend you going to any country and buying land and sinking your claws in and like carving out a space for yourself and not associating with the locals. I know most of you watching Anton's class would not be interested in that, but if you are watching this and that was your idea, that's not really what any country needs. South Africa needs people. If you're looking to relocate there, my African-American brothers and sisters, try to find a community, learn a little bit of the local language, of course, and um, get to know your your locals. I'm introverted, so I'm not saying I'd be out every day partying, you know, but, um, because I'm more of an introverted person, but I certainly would do my due diligence and ensure that I integrate as much as possible with the locals, speak to the elders, speak to the community, see what their needs are. You could express, of course, what you're looking for and try to build community, right? The world right now needs community. We need to return to that. That's very important. That will help heal the world and having community. So you guys, that was my 10th reason. You can buy land there. And so that's a fantastic thing if you're looking to relocate. Anyways, you guys, I'm about all out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you stayed all the way to the end, fist pump to you. That's awesome. Please comment below. I love to engage with you guys. And like I said, keep it friendly. And um, yeah. <laughs>